So you want to play your old console on your new TV, but your old console has these and your new TV has this, not this. What do you do? We have an answer for you. So we started a new video series last week. Ask Dr. Ma. And in the comments of those videos, we've curated some more questions from you. And today we have two, we have two questions. Uh, and this first one comes from Ryan Michael 7345. He says, Dr. Mod, I have a question. Can you mod retro consoles to output digital signals so they can be played on modern television? This is a question that I asked myself when I first met Dr. Mon, shoot, going all the way back. What do you say? Can you can you do this? Yes. A, and B, should you do it? It's a good question. And I'm sure a lot of people have different views on this too. Mm -hmm. I have kind of conflicting views about this. Uh, I like to see old systems played again. Yeah. I hate to think about all our childhood, like video game consoles just being thrown away or just being locked in a closet and never enjoyed again. So I can see the appeal to wanting to have your console play on a modern TV. Why? Because you're more likely to use it, right? Yeah. So being able to plug it into an HDMI uh, would be great because it gets you playing your console again. In that respect, I like that idea. There's different ways of doing it. One is uh, to get an upscaler, and then that way you don't have to do any real modifications to the console itself. Yeah, just plug and play. Yeah. And there's some good quality upscalers there, and, mm -hmm. and you kind of get what you pay for with those, so you want to get a good one. And, and that's honestly what I use. Now that being said, there's another alternative, and that is actually working on the hardware on your console and doing some modifications to it to be able to have an HDMI port, whether that be a micro uh, HDMI or mini HDMI or a regular sized HDMI mm -hmm. port. And that exists for several consoles, uh, such as uh, the Nintendo 64, the Dreamcast, gosh, even the the Game Gear and the uh, Game Boy Advance, which which we've we've shown on the show before. Yeah, if you haven't seen those videos, check them out right here. So, I I mean, I kind of liked it on the handhelds. Why? Because it allows you to transfer the the signal from your handheld to the TV and play it on there and play it on a bigger screen. That is truly a modification yeah. because those didn't have that capability no. for it. Really with those, there's there's really little modification to the actual board of the console. It's actually an extra board that goes with it. So you're really not tampering with the board too much on those mods. When you're doing an HDMI mod, let's say on a GameCube or a Nintendo 64 or a, a Dreamcast, uh, you will be doing some soldering onto the actual board. And that happens if you don't know what you're doing, you could really mess things up. Mm -hmm. Not to mention you're you're cutting, you're doing a lot of cutting to your case. Sometimes, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have to make that port, what do you gotta do? You gotta modify the case yeah. with a Dremel tool or something like yeah. that. And, and you know, you're, the other thing people should think about when they're thinking of doing something like that, what's gonna happen when HDMI becomes obsolete, mm -hmm. right? I know this sounds crazy, uh, yeah. okay? But this is going to happen eventually. HDMI is not the forever answer because I can remember when Component was the thing, and then RCA was the yep. thing before that, and then Coaxial and- S-Video. Yeah. yeah. So you gotta think about that too. Do you really wanna make this kind of modification that's kind of permanent, and after you cut that shell, it's like that forever. Yeah. Unless you wanna reshell it, but to each their own. Mm -hmm. um, I think if it gets you to use your old gaming console again, I'm all for it. Yeah. And that's the key, just getting to enjoy your retro games again is a good thing. Yeah. An HDMI converter for something like an N64 or a Dreamcast or a GameCube, super common mm -hmm. on Amazon. They're really, in my opinion, there's no reason to hack into the back of your shell, cut it up and make an HDMI port. Because basically what you're doing is you're taking that converter and you're just installing it in the console. And it's just, it's a little dongle. It's really not that big. The only thing I don't like about the HDMI converters is they require power. So you actually do have to power that converter with the USB cable. Not the greatest, but it's fine. Uh, if you if you do install it into the console, you can run and run it with power. But we ran into a problem before. Yeah. And here's something that you should definitely be on the lookout for if, if you are planning on getting some sort of uh, HDMI converter or dongle for your consoles. Make sure you use one that is nice. That's why Dr. Mod said, you know, get yourself a nice one, spend a little extra money. And by extra money, these things aren't expensive. 30 no. bucks, maybe. Yeah. You like to use Level Hike. I do. I haven't had any issues with their products. Um, and some of them don't even require external power. Like yeah, the now I guys. will, full disclosure, neither of us have any affiliation with Level Hike, no. okay? Um, no. no affiliation whatsoever. But 
I will put an affiliate Amazon link in the link below if you want to check those out. Yeah. Um, but we are not affiliated with that company at all. Nope. But why? Why do you suggest this? Well, because I've never had a console have an issue with them. I thought the quality of the image was very good. And we kind of learned that from, well, remember your... My GameCube. Your GameCube. That's, that's what I was going to yep, bring up here. I remember here. I modded that GameCube, and then I think it was like a few weeks later, you're like, uh, hey, it won't turn on. So <laughs> I was using this HDMI adapter that I bought on Amazon. Yep. It was cheap. 20 bucks, I think. And it was, it worked fine for a little while. And I turned, I turned my GameCube on to play and it kind of like, and, and then I smell. Yep. The smell. You can tell when something has been fried. And I thought, this is not good. I am nowhere near the level of what he, what he knows when it comes to this sort of stuff. So I called right away and I was like, hey, something happened. I don't know what, but I was just turning my GameCube on and, and this happened. What happened? Well, it ended up shorting the power board on the game. Uh-huh. And uh, so, you know, it, so it, it shot power back to the back GameCube. into the GameCube, yep. which then fried the power board. And uh, so what we had to do is tear down that GameCube completely. Yeah. And this was the model that has a separate power board on it. So yeah. we had to get all the way to the very bottom of the shell. I mean, it's a complete tear down and then put another power board that I had from, mm -hmm. uh, from a previous GameCube that was dead. And, uh, and that ended up fixing it. And then what did we do after that? I uh, went straight to Level Hike. <laughs> now I'm sure there's other brands that are oh, probably yeah. fine too, yeah. but Level Hike is the one that we've always had really good experience yeah. Hyper, with. Hyperkin's pretty good too. I Hyperkin think. makes some yeah. good stuff as well. Just be cautious when doing this because it, it does require power, those things do. And in this case, it ran power back into the board and fried the board. If you don't have a Dr. Mod handy, it's not the sort of thing that you can just easily fix. You gotta tear the whole thing apart and you have to have a new uh, power yeah. board. So be very cautious. Can your old console be modded uh, to run HDMI? Yes. If the project is something that you wanna tackle or whatever, yeah, sure. I mean, if somebody emailed you and they were like, hey, this is all I want, can you add HDMI to my Nintendo 64, is that something that you would do? Uh, we have done it before, yeah, yeah. It, okay. it is. Now hopefully that answers your question. It's just so much easier to get yourself a converter. They're cheap, they're easy. That's the route that I would suggest, and it sounds like that's probably what you would suggest. I mean, that's too. what I personally do, but you know, to each yeah. their own. We have another question. Uh, this comes from Robert Cannon 1570 on YouTube. Hi, Dr. Mod. In your opinion, what is the easiest system to mod? I'm looking to get into it. What is the gateway system? The gateway mod. Yep. Ah, Thanks, know? Robert Cannon. Yeah, thank you for that question. You know what? I'm going to say the best way to start, probably software modding. Yeah. You know, and if I was going to pick the first one for somebody, you know, new to modding to, to, to take on, I would say the Nintendo Wii. Mm -hmm. And then as far as handhelds go, I would say uh, the PS Vita and 3DS are very, very easy to pick up and learn about. A lot of, a lot of videos on the internet on how to mod yeah. them and, and, and great tutorials online for how to do it safely. And I'd say those are great ones to start yeah, with. Yeah, I mean, that's again, that's what we touched on in episode two. If you haven't seen episode two, it's in the playlist. But in episode two, we ranked your favorite mods to play, mm -hmm. and then we ranked your favorite mods to do. Very different uh -huh. list. Very, very different list. In fact, I believe the lists were like sort of flipped. Flip. Almost flipped, yeah. Um, because the Wii is at the top of that list mm -hmm. of favorite mods to do because it's pretty easy. So there you go. Uh, that would be Dr. Mod's suggestion would be to, to definitely tackle something like a Wii um, or a, a 3DS or a, a Vita mm -hmm. or even a PSP maybe? Yeah. PSP. How about the Wii U? Wii U isn't too bad. Um, it, it can also, they're very similar to the Wii, so that, that's okay. not a bad one either. So if you're looking to get your first fix and you want your gateway drug, um, yeah, check out the Wii. Mm -hmm. It's also probably among my favorite mods. If I were to rank my mods, I feel like that's probably what I oh, would do. Yeah. Anybody I've ever shown it to when they see that 3D menu? That Wii Flow menu is beautiful. Yeah. Just like, wow. Yeah. So there you have it. If you have any questions for the doctor or if you have any questions for myself, feel free to hit the comment section. We browse the comment section right before we make these videos and we are going to pick your questions. And thanks again to Ryan and Robert for asking those questions. Those are always fun. Hit the comments, leave your question. And if you want your gateway fix and want to know about the Wii or Wii U mod, you should watch this video right here. It'll tell you all about it. And if you don't want to miss 
more episodes of Dr. Mod's Lab or Ask Dr. Mod, make sure you follow along, subscribe to the channel right here, hit that little bell icon to be notified when new videos come up or just join the Discord because it'll tell you there. Until next time. Um, let's read some of the comments. Read the comments? Yeah, they're down there. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, let's, let's go with that one next. Why did they say that? Whoa. That's weird. That's no way to talk to your mom.